Okay, so we put some gas in it, and before I crank it, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the air filter. I'm not really sure what's wrong with it. Um, all I was told is it's been sitting up for a while. Just wants to make sure it's gonna crank and run okay. So, we'll check and make sure that this air filter is nice and clean. And that looks pretty good. It's hard to do this with one hand. Flash! What's going on everybody? Today I'm working on this Honda mower that hasn't been running in a while and won't start up. So I'm going to take you through the steps that I use to diagnose a non-starting small engine. First off, let's look at the oil and see if there's anything in there. That dipstick is dry as a bone, so we'll need to put in some oil before we try and start things up. There, that looks a lot better. Then let's check to see if there's any gas. Now it's time to start the engine. Let's check the easiest thing first. Make sure you don't have any obstructions in your air filter that would block air from coming through. In my case, there was just a roach and some roach droppings. But I have found cardboard in these before. Don't ask me why someone would put that in there. However, a little cockroach isn't enough to keep the engine from starting, so it's time to see if there's a spark. To do this, just pull the boot off of the plug, take out the plug, then look to see what condition the plug is in. This plug looks pretty clean and is hardly used. Now put the boot back on the plug and lay it against the metal part on the engine. Give the pull cord a tug to see if you can see a spark. And on this little Honda, there is no spark. Time to take the engine cover off. Then set the pull cord out of the way. The nice thing about this engine is that you can just lean the cover back and you don't have to disconnect any fuel lines. You see those two dark squares on the flywheel? Those are the magnets that induce a current inside of the coil. Each revolution, the magnets pass the coil and a spark should be produced. While it's rare, the magnets can lose their charge, so let's check that first. As you can see, they're still good. Now let's take the coil off to see what's going on. This was a pretty easy one. See all that junk on the center of the coil? Well, it's actually little metal shavings that are just dirty and look black. They were causing the coil to ground against the flywheel instead of sending the electrical charge to the plug. So just wipe those off and clean up the magneto before reinstalling. And here's the culprit. This engine has a brake that comes in contact with the flywheel when you let go of the lever on the handlebar. This is most likely where all that metal came from. When you put the magneto back on, be sure to use a business card to set the gap between the flywheel and then bolt it down tight, but not too tight. This is an aluminum block. Now I'll perform the same test as before and boom, there's a spark. Now we can reassemble and try to start the engine again. Still no luck. We know it's getting air, we know it's getting a spark. So the only thing left is fuel. Time to take apart that carburetor. Keep in mind that the airbox bolts on most small engines also hold the carb in place. Also, the airbox usually has a crankcase ventilation tube, so you'll need to take that off as well. They are usually short and a pain to get to. Take off any gaskets that you can, but if they are hard to get rid of, just leave them on, unless you have a carb rebuild kit with new gaskets. I think I have found the problem. While trying to remove the throttle and trope controls, I've noticed that they weren't moving. This makes it really hard to get them off the carb. 
but after some effort, I got them all off and all that's left to remove is the fuel line. Then we can start cleaning all the gunk off of this carburetor. Next, we'll take the bowl off to see how dirty things are inside. And as suspected, there's a lot of debris and trash floating around in there. Let's set the bowl aside and let it soak in some carb cleaner while we try to free up the throttle and choke valves. By the way, because I couldn't remove those gaskets without tearing them, I'm using mass airflow cleaner instead of carb cleaner. It's more expensive, but it doesn't leave a residue that will eat into the gasket. It takes some patience to clean up that choke valve because I don't want to break the plastic linkage, but with a few sprays and some light pressure, it will eventually come free. Next, we spray some cleaner through the main jet to see if anything comes out the Venturi section of the carb, and nothing. It's clogged. Now, I'll spray some cleaner into the balance tube, and I can see something coming out in the Venturi, but not out of the bottom through the main jet. Balance tube and main jet are both connected by the emulsion tube, which is right above the main jet. So after a few sprays from the balance tube, the gunk inside of the main jet gets blown out from the top. Now we can see that when we spray through the balance tube, it's coming out of the bottom through that main jet, which means it's now been cleared. So all we have to do is put everything back together. It's much easier to put the linkages on now that the butterfly valves can move. Then hook the fuel line back up, and don't forget to add the gasket between the airbox and the carb. Also remember to hook up the crankcase ventilation hose from earlier. Then put the bolts back in. Turn the fuel back on with a cutoff valve and see what happens. I will call him Bert. Bert, don't go! Bert! He's moving on. He has a new life now. And that's it. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Be sure to hit the like button and leave a comment below. And don't forget, pick up your internet certified mechanic gear on Teespring. The link is in the description and we sell these in a variety of colors and recently added mugs. What a great Father's Day gift or Mother's Day gift or just any gift. Just go buy some of these so I can feed my great Dane. He eats a lot. <laughs>